All right, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to today's uh session uh, uh, brought to you by Thickmill, where we'll be concluding build your trading strategy part three, uh, which will be swing trading. Okay, apologies for the delay, just uh, some minor technical issues. Uh, just sorting out a few things uh, before we start. Okay, so just want to make sure you guys can hear me loud and clear and see my screen as well. Just give me a minute while I just sort a couple of things out. And do take note, we've got the chat box open as well. So do not hesitate to drop any questions or queries that you may have at any point during this webinar. All right, just want to make sure you guys can hear me loud and clear and see my screen as well. All right, just give me a minute and I'll be right back. All right, hi everyone. Okay, let's kick things off. All right, okay, so welcome to today's webinar brought to you by Tickmill, uh, where we'll be concluding <clears throat> part three of Build Your Trading Strategy, which covers uh, swing trading. So just before we start, do take note of the disclaimer and the high-risk warning as well. This material provided here is for information purposes only and should not be considered as investment advice. And also take note of the high-risk warning that comes with trading CFDs as they are complex instruments and come with a high risk of losing money rapidly due to leverage. All right, so... <clears throat> So my name is uh, Ketan Ramachandra. Uh, so this webinar series is brought in a special partnership between Tickmill and Everest Fortune Group, where we've been the finalists for best FX and equity research for the following years, 2019, 2020, and 2021. All right. So this is the agenda for today. <clears throat> what is swing trading? We'll, uh, uh, we'll start off with that, of course, and then we'll look at what a the typical swing trading indicators that we can use, what are the typical chart patterns as well, so the more common ones that we can use to identify momentum, reversals, breakouts. Then we'll also look at fundamental data as well, which fundamental data has been acting as a strong catalyst in, uh, current, in the current market environment. And of course, we'll conclude with uh, the examples of uh, swing trading as well. Right, so for the examples, I'll be using the dollar index. Uh, as of course, we know once you know how the dollar index is trading, it translates uh, naturally to all the other uh, currency pairs as well. So if dollar index is rising, currency pairs such as the euro and the pound uh, would be falling, Aussie kiwi would be falling, and currency pairs such as dollar yen, dollar franc will be rising. Right? So once we can uh, are able to do the analysis on the dollar index, uh, pretty much everything else will be uh, uh, will be will fall into place accordingly. All right, there's a question by Neeraj. Uh, all right, okay, I, there's no certificate of participation, but the webinar recordings are uploaded onto Tickmill's YouTube website, right? So usually it takes about a couple of days, or if not, by the end of the week, this webinar recording will be uploaded onto their YouTube page, but uh, no, no, there's no certificate of participation as far as uh, I'm aware of, all right? Okay. And then, okay, so for example, I said uh, we'll be using the dollar index and we'll also be looking at uh, the indices as well. So we'll be using the SP500, which tracks the S&P 500 futures. So we'll be using that as an example as well. 
All right. Okay. So basically, just the basics first. For those who may not be aware of what is swing trading, right? So it is basically a strategy that attempts to capture short to medium term gains. Now, this can last from a period of a few days to several weeks, and sometimes even a month or so, right? So it's a trading technique that uses technical analysis to identify potential entry, exit, and stop loss points based on significant swing highs and swing lows, as well as potential breakouts as well. Now, this strategy can be uh, implemented solely, based solely on uh, technical analysis. But if you are looking at technical uh, fundamentals as well, you can incorporate fundamental analysis into this strategy as an additional tool. All right, so what are some of the <clears throat> uh, pros and cons for swing trading? Well, in general, swing trading takes up less time than day trading because um, once the position has been put, has opened, whether you're short or long, you're not going to be uh, continuing, uh, continuously analyzing the markets as well. You will be monitoring it, but you will not be uh, con con continuously um, analyzing the markets or adding positions or closing positions, right? So if you're doing day trading, you could be opening two or three different positions uh, throughout the day. Perhaps uh, you would start trading during the Asia session as well, and then maybe the Europe session and finally the US session. So you could end up trading at least three times a day. And depending on which currencies or commodities you're looking at, you could have probably five, six trades going on at any particular point in time. Whereas with swing trading, you, you naturally, of course, can have more than one trade going on, but it's quite unlikely you're going to be putting on two swing trading trades in the same day around the same time. So uh, you would generally spend less time once the trade goes active. Of course, before that, you'll be spending time uh, uh, doing your technical analysis as well as some fundamental analysis. So that naturally takes time. Uh, but of course, once the trade actually goes on, you will spend less time in terms of day-to-day -day activity. Right. Okay. So this is a strategy that tries to maximize medium term profit potential by capturing market swings. Now this could be a swing high or swing low, right? Swing traders uh, can rely solely on technical analysis, which simplifies the trading process. Because if someone who may not have time to understand the fundamental uh, side of the market or simply does not wish to uh, devote more time into that and focus, decides to focus more on improving their technical analysis, this is a strategy that can uh, be implemented without looking at fundamentals as well. Okay, what's up, what are the, some of the cons of pro trading? Uh, swing trading, sorry. <clears throat> because as we know, swing trading positions are held from a period of a few days to a few weeks, even a month or two. So these uh, type of positions are, of course, subject to overnight and weekend market risk, right? So whenever the futures market close, uh, and they reopen, right? There's a possibility of prices gapping, right? They could gap up or gap low. So any significant gap up or gap low could uh, potentially impact our position. Of course, if the market uh, gaps in the direction uh, of your trade, then of course it is a, it's a bonus. But in the event it doesn't and it actually gaps against your position or your direction, then obviously uh, you could get stopped out or you could uh, turn from, uh, or you could swing from a position in profit to a position which comes to break even or even worse, swings into a, uh, into a losing position, right? Okay, and of course, sudden market reversals can result in major losses, but this actually can be mitigated, right? So as, as soon as you put on any positions, right, there should be a trailing, uh, there should be a stop loss identified, at least a stop loss, a fixed stop loss identified as a percentage of uh, your your total account size. So in general, here uh, we try and uh, recommend of having a risk size of at least one to two percent of your total account size, right? So any single position should you should not be risking more than one to two percent of your total account uh, on any single trade. So that's how we can mitigate the losses and. Um, on each trade as well as mitigate the overall portfolio losses as well. So this is very important. So sudden market reversals can actually be mitigated by implementing a stop loss, right? Starting off with a fixed stop loss. Uh, and then as position as the position moves in your favor, be it long or short, you can then start to trail that stop loss manually or you can uh, do it as an automated feature as well. 
Okay. And of course, because it's a swing trading position, you're going to be holding that uh, position for a longer period of time. So when it comes to actually booking profits, it actually takes a longer time to actually book profits, of course. But naturally, because it is such a, you're having a <clears throat> longer holding period, generally in terms of absolute returns and percentage returns, they're actually much higher than, um, for example, swing trading, for example. Uh, so for, when compared to day trading, right? Okay. All right. Okay. Um, there's a question by uh Prabhadik. Yeah, actually, we'll be going through the slides first, and then after that, we'll go into the charts as well. So, the this is how the webinar has been structured. The content has been structured. So we'll be going through the basics first, looking at the slides, looking at chart patterns, looking at uh, fundamental data, looking at how to interpret the fundamental data, and then we'll go into examples of uh, swing trading, past examples of swing trading, and, current, and then we'll look at some of the live charts as well, all right? Okay, so what are the typical swing trading indicators and chart patterns? Well, these are the more common ones that you can use. Uh, moving averages, of course, Bollinger Bands, stochastic, stochastic Oscillator, Relative Strength Index, or RSI. Now, you can use any combination of the, these indicators or any other in indicators as well as uh, just because I mentioned these four indicators, it doesn't mean other indicators may not work uh, for string, swing trading strategies. What's more important is actually to use indicators that you are familiar with and understand and, if, and actually help you to identify uh, entry positions, be it swing short or swing uh, long positions, right? That's more important. And also recognizing chart patterns as well, because when you look at uh, charts on a, like a four hour time frame or daily time frame, you are able to, uh, at least for me, I, it's, I find it easier to identify such chart patterns and then combining it with technical analysis helps us to uh, identify sw swing long and swing short entries as well. All right, okay, there's a question. Can chart patterns be used on one minute time frame? Yes, chart patterns can be used across various time frames. But for me, because I'm more personally more of a swing trader as well, so that is why I I look more at on the four hour and daily time frames, right? Chart patterns are applicable across all the time frames as well, right? It's definitely applicable across all the time frames: one minute, five minute, fifteen minutes as well. Yep. Okay, so <clears throat> some of the more common uh chart patterns are the wedges, pendants, triangles, and head and shoulders. So what are wedges? Wedges are used to identify reversals. So a falling wedge on a falling market uh, typically looks for a bullish breakout or a rising wedge on a rising market typically results in a bearish breakout. Now, pendants can lead to new breakouts as well. So this happens when market uh, the price action consolidates uh, after a significant price action. We look at it through the charts as well, chart patterns as well. Uh, of course, these are just words, might not be easier for, might not be easy to visualize it but we will be looking at some typical chart patterns as well. Then, okay, triangles as well. Triangles are seen as a precursor to a breakout. Now, this could be a bullish breakout to the upside or a bearish breakout to the downside. And, of course, we have head and shoulders as well, which lead to bearish reversals, while inverse head and shoulders typically lead to bullish reversals. All right, okay, so now we're going to be looking at... Uh, what a typical wedge pattern would look, look like. So in this sense, you can see price is rising up, price is in a, a uptrend. And you can also see that by drawing the trend line on the upper uh, upper trend line and the lower trend line, you can see that it's forming a wedge. So this is what we mean by a rising wedge pattern. Right, so the rising wedge pa pattern usually forms in an uptrend. And uh, once price breaks below the lower trend line, it, it typically, uh, signals a bearish breakout. Now for the downtrend, you can see price action is falling down, it's in a downtrend. And when you draw the trend line on uh, the top of the wicks and the bottom of the candles here, you can see the pattern uh, of a falling wedge being formed. And as price breaks out of this falling wedge, this typically uh, uh, signals a bullish breakout. Right. So these are chart patterns. Uh, these are typical chart patterns for wedges, uptrend, rising wedge, and when price breaks below the lower trend line, this uh, signals a bearish breakout. And then conversely for the falling wedge, when price breaks above the upper trend line, this typically signals a bullish breakout. 
All right. Now these are patterns, right? So patterns are uh, this happens when patterns are generally formed when you have a strong move. Uh, from uh, it could be a strong bullish move or strong bearish move as well. So it could also be a case where you have a strong uh, bearish move and then price starts to consolidate as well. And then you will have the pattern being formed, right? So this example here is the is an example of a pattern being formed after a strong uh, correction and then price starts to consolidate getting narrow and narrow so you can see it's a case of higher uh higher lows and lower highs as you see it's quite price getting squeezed into the middle and before uh the next catalyst causes the price to break either to the upside or the or to the downside so patterns can uh result in bullish or bearish breakouts and it can happen after a strong rise up in price and the price starts to consolidate or squeeze and then this could uh, break either to the downside or to the upside. Similarly, as price corrects heavily and then starts to consolidate and squeeze, you could have a breakout either to the upside or downside again. So this is how uh, we identify or categorize pattern chart patterns. Right, okay, then we also have triangles, right? These are the more typical triangle patterns that you will see. This is a rising triangle here, falling triangle, and symmetrical triangle, right? Symmetrical triangle is uh, pretty much uh, falls into the same category as the pattern, right? You can see it's the same category as the pattern. So it's basically a sy symmetrical triangle is essentially a pattern as well. All right, so for the rising triangle, uh, you will see this uh, top uh, pattern being formed. Uh, so you will reach uh, a resistance level, right? It could be a pullback resistance or an overlap resistance where price has failed to break above it a couple of times. It could be two times, three times. In this example, price has failed to break above this resistance level twice. But not only that, uh, it's also making higher lows. So you can see price is making higher lows, right? Price is making, where's my pen? Hang on. Right, price is making higher lows, and we can see strong resistance here as well. So price goes up, hits resistance, comes back down, forms a low, goes back up to the same resistance level or around that region, drops back. But as you can see, the lows are getting higher and higher. Right, you could even uh, run into resistance again, fall back here, and you can see the lows are getting higher before finally breaking out. So typically, when you see chart patterns such as this, this typically... Uh, results in a bullish breakout. Now, similarly, for the falling triangle, as price is falling down, it finds strong support at this particular level. It retraces higher, comes back down to the same support or around that zone, bounces higher. But you can see in this case, it is making lower highs, right? So falling triangles are identified by lower highs, while rising triangles are identified by higher lows, right? This is one simple way to differentiate uh, rising triangles and falling triangles. So back to the case of the falling triangle, price has corrected after a strong move, finds support at this particular uh, support level, retraces higher, comes back down to the same support level, retraces up again, but makes a lower high it could potentially bounce off this level again to make another lower high before finally breaking out. So this is how uh, we can use the rising triangle and falling triangles to identify potential bullish or bearish breakouts. All right, okay, there's a, a question by uh, Gupta as well. Which time frame is best suited for technical patterns? Right. In, okay, this really depends on your personal trading strategy. If you are using five and 15 minute charts, or 30 minute charts or even the one minute chart definitely you can use chart patterns uh chart patterns will be uh will be there to be identified then similarly if you go up into the higher time frames one hour four hour daily time frame the chart patterns are there as well so what's more important is to be actually to be able to identify the chart patterns itself so it this uh applies across almost all the time frames right whether it's one minute five minute 15 30 one hour four hour or the daily time frame right so chart patterns is not uh um associated with any particular uh, time frame, right? I wouldn't say there's any 
particular chart pattern that works better in the higher time frame or it works better in the lower time frame. I would say it they all work pretty equally across all the time frames. Okay, so these are triangles. All right, no worries, welcome. Okay, uh next. Right. Okay. Next. Okay. Oops. Uh, okay. Head and shoulders. Okay. So for head and shoulders, uh, you will see price rising up very strongly, and then it runs into a particular resistance. It pulls back. As it makes the first pullback, that's important when it makes the first pullback because that's when you are going to identify the neckline. Right. The neckline is the first pullback or the first support level, and then when price bounces off this level to go higher that's when you form the head. Remember, the head must obviously be higher than the left shoulder. If price runs up, drops back to a support level, and then bounces higher, and then drops, then obviously this is not a, uh, a head and shoulder pattern, right? That's not a head and shoulder pattern. So one key aspect to take note of is as price makes the left shoulder, it drops down to form the neckline, it bounces up. Do take note the neckline is only identified after price bounces off. So you are, you'll be identifying the neckline first as price rises from this support level. And once price climbs above the left shoulder, that's when you have confirmation of the left shoulder and the neckline. And then when price reverses from this new high and starts to drop, that's when you have confirmation of the head. All right. So just to recap, you will be looking to identify the neckline first, right? The first will be to identify the neckline once price uh, bounces off a support level. Then as price climbs above this original high, that's when you have confirmation of the left shoulder. And then as price reverses from this new high and starts to drop, that's when you get confirmation of the head. Okay, so that's how we uh, identify the head and shoulders pattern. And then as price comes back, it's important that price has to bounce off this neckline, right? Price has to bounce off this neckline. If price breaks below this neckline uh, after making this first bounce, then this is not a valid head and shoulders pattern. For a valid head and shoulders pattern, price has to bounce off the neckline for a second time. And then as it bounces higher, the right shoulder can never be higher than the head, right? Price could potentially be higher than the left shoulder, here, but this swing high here has to be lower than the head to be able to uh, to confirm that this is a valid head and shoulders pattern. So now as price makes this second uh, right, uh, makes this right shoulder, uh, it forms a swing high and starts to drop lower. That's when you, at this point, as price has turned and start to drop, at this point, you know that, okay, this is a valid head and shoulders uh, chart pattern. And as price come approaches this neckline, there's a potential, strong potential for a bearish breakout, right? There's a strong potential for bearish breakout. So this is where you would uh, potentially look to go short on this instrument or even put a sell limit order as well. Now, similarly for the inverse head and shoulder, it's basically the opposite of the regular head and shoulder. So the... The regular head and shoulder pattern is used to identify a bearish reversal or a bearish breakout, whereas the inverse head and shoulders would uh, be used to identify a bullish reversal or a bullish breakout. So similarly, as price is falling down, right, as price is falling down, it finds support at a particular level, it bounces up, and then as price runs into resistance again, and starts to drop, that's when you can identify the neckline, right? The neckline is only identified after price makes this uh, support here, find support around this level, comes back up to a particular resistance area and then drops. So that's when you are, that's when you're able to identify the neckline. So that's step one, okay? You're able to identify the neckline. And then as price starts to fall, you also get confirmation of the first shoulder, right? Then uh, just like the head and shoulders, the for to get confirmation of the head, price must drop below the first shoulder, right? Or below this low here. If price doesn't uh, drop below this level here, then you're not going to get a, a inverse head and shoulder pattern. So then once price drops and makes a new low and starts to reverse to come higher, that's when you get confirmation of the head, right? Get confirmation of the head. And then as price approaches the neckline once again, 
it has to reverse around this level, right? If it breaks above this neckline, then of course, this is not an inverse, uh, this is not a valid inverse head and shoulder pattern. So as price reverses from around the neckline, it doesn't have to be exactly at the neckline, but close enough to it and starts to reverse. That's when you know that, okay, we are very close to having a valid inverse head and shoulder pattern form. And once again, the second shoulder, uh, this low, this swing low here cannot be lower than the head, right? It can be a little bit lower than the first shoulder. I think that's fine, but it can never be lower than the head. And as price uh, forms, find support around this level and comes up, this is where you will be looking for a potential bullish breakout. So you could either wait for price to break above this level to get confirmation before putting on the trade, or you could uh, place a buy limit order if you want to get in at a better price. All right, okay, there's a question, uh, Abdul Moody. Uh, can I enter the trade from the top of the right shoulder? Uh, Potentially, yes, you can as well. You could potentially do that as well. If you were to do that, right? If you were to um, uh, enter the trade, so let's take the head and shoulders, uh, the regular head and shoulders pattern. If you were to enter a short trade, once the right shoulder has been formed, you can do so as well because obviously you're going to be getting in at a much better price action. But I would uh, recommend that you use a relatively tight stop loss. So if you know what's the absolute peak here, right? The right shoulder may be... The, you have the candle and you have the absolute peak of the wick. I would say set at least, uh, depending once again on your lot size and your account size, I uh, generally keep about 10 to 20 pips stop loss above the top of this wick. All right. Just to give yourself a little bit of buffer, should price maybe retrace up close to the sh right shoulder again before dropping again. So yes, you can uh, enter the trade from the top of the right shoulder. Obviously, it gets you a much better price. Uh, uh, not much better, but it, got, it gets you a much better entry position on the short side. But do take note, I would, I personally would use a relatively tight stop loss in this scenario. And I, I use it by identifying the absolute high of the candle here, the wick, and use at least 10 to 20 pips uh, buffer to set the stop loss above the abs highest absolute level. So similarly, for the inverse head and shoulder, yes, you can uh, enter the trade as well as the second shoulder is formed and starts to rise up. Naturally, of course, this gets you a much better entry price as well. But similarly, find the absolute low of this candle here and put a stop loss that's at least 10 to 20 pips underneath that that. Uh, that candle or the wick of that candle to give you a little bit of breathing space. Yes, so you can definitely do that as well. All right, so this is how we can try and identify inverse uh, head and shoulder patterns as well as head and shoulder patterns. All right, okay. Next, uh, we will look at uh, the fundamental data, uh, which fundamental data uh, has been driving currency markets in recent months and weeks as well, and how can we interpret the data, right? It's not only important to know which data is driving markets, but also to uh, to be able to identify and interpret the data in a quick and uh, simple manner. Right, okay. So, right, of course, for most parts of 2022 and even 2023, inflation-related data has been driving markets, right? So when you have stronger inflation data coming in, Let's just take it from the perspective perspective of the US, right? So we all know the Federal Reserve uh, is the most uh, uh, influential central bank in the world. Whenever they raise interest rates or cut interest rates, it uh, has a major impact on the rest of the financial system as well, right? So the rest of the central banks usually follow suit. They usually follow what the Fed is doing. So let's take it, uh, let's do the interpretation of this data from the perspective of the Federal Reserve and uh, America. So if inflation data is coming in very strong in the US, you get uh, CPI data that's coming in stronger than the forecast every month. Then of course, oops, where's my... Then of course, uh, the Federal Reserve is likely to be hawkish and that means uh, they're going to be uh, more inclined to raise interest rates. So if, if the Federal Reserve is in raising interest rates aggressively, the value of the US dollar uh, typically rises, the value of US government bond yields also rise, right? So that means the dollar index is going to rise as well. And that, of course, will cause currency pairs such as the US, uh, euro dollar, pound dollar to fall, 
Aussie, key, Aussie and Kiwi to fall, and of course, currency pairs such as uh, dollar yen and dollar franc to uh, to rise as well. Uh, all right, there's a question by James. Uh, no, I don't think uh, Tick Mill will pass you the slides, but uh, do feel free to take screenshots at any point in time. And also, uh, the, this webinar will be uploaded onto Tick Mill's uh, YouTube page as well. So you can always, once it's uploaded, you can always watch the webinar again and then take the screenshots as and when necessary. All right. All right. So, yeah. So back to uh, fundamental data. Uh, right. So if it regards to inflation, inflation has been driving uh, markets uh, to the way, on the way up and down as well. So for most parts of 2022 in the U.S. with inflation uh, data coming in stronger than expected, dollar index rises, bond government bond yield rises as the Fed raises interest rates aggressively. Now, as inflation data starts to peak and moderate and slow down, uh, you can see inflation trending lower in the U.S. and, and in general, uh, well, over the last few months, at some points coming in a little bit lower than the forecast as well. So when you have inflation that is dropping on an annualized basis and you see inflation data coming in slightly on the softer side, this creates a bearish catalyst for the dollar index. So that means the value of the dollar index is very likely to fall. And you will see currency pairs such as the euro and pound rise, right? Similarly, employment data such as NFPs, we just had NFPs number last week, right? We saw the number was actually much weaker than the forecast as well. And we also saw unemployment rate going higher from 3.8 to 3.9%. So this report, employment report from the US was uh, very bearish for the US dollar because it shows uh, the labor market in the US could be starting to show some signs of uh, weakening. So if the labor market is starting to weaken, that means the Federal Reserve will not be so hawkish uh, with regards to their monetary policy outlook. So that means they are very likely to keep interest rates on hold, which is what they did last week as well. We also had the FOMC meeting last week. So we had uh, two uh, economic events, uh, which was the FOMC and the NFPs, which both acted as a bearish catalyst for uh, the dollar index. Right. So you can see clearly last week examples with two very recent uh, data points that showed us how uh, having a neutral statement from the FOMC and having uh, weaker than expected NFP data can cause a uh, very strong bearish reaction for the dollar index. Okay, there's a question by Abdul as well. If CPI data is posted higher, what would be the reaction of the dollar? Okay, so typically when CPI data comes in stronger than the forecast, now this could be the forecast for the annualized uh, data or for the monthly data, and it can also relate to the core reading or the headline reading. So if the total, if all uh, of the inflation data points to a stronger than uh, the expected reading, then this would typically act as a bullish catalyst for the dollar, right? So in general, if CPI data as a whole is stronger than uh, the forecast, this is going to typically act as a bullish catalyst for the US dollar. If CPI data as a whole is softer than the respective forecast, then this will act as a bearish catalyst for the dollar, all right? So similarly here, and the other thing is, of course, central bank actions are important when you have hiking, cutting intervention. So if you guys have been trading dollar yen or any of the yen crosses recently, you would have seen large uh, drops or large swings uh, in the in the yen crosses because this is uh, of rumors of possible intervention measures by the Bank of Japan. So intervention measures by the Bank of Japan typically means that the Bank of Japan is going to be selling US dollars and selling US treasuries and they're using the sales proceeds to buy back the Japanese yen in the open market. So when they're buying back the Japanese yen in the open market, that means the value of the Japanese yen is rising and this would cause all the yen crosses to fall. So that means dollar yen will fall, pound yen will fall and so on and so forth. All right, okay, uh, Neeraj, I've answered this question uh, earlier as well. Uh, do take note, all Tick Mill webinars are recorded and they'll be posted onto their YouTube page in due time. So this could be in a couple of days or by the end of the week at the very latest, right? Do take note, all uh, videos by Tick Mill are uploaded onto their YouTube page. All right, okay. Uh, Abdul, there's another question. Well, if the interest rate is uh, of the uh, central bank is raised. Okay, we can get into that. Hi, all right. 
uh, we're getting to that as well. I'm going to jump into Forex Factory as well, right? This is how we're going to use fundamental data. Uh, we're going to use Forex Factory to help us get access to all the data as well. All right, so just going back to interest rates, if uh, the Federal Reserve is hiking interest rates, uh, all right, okay, you can just, okay, I'll try and yeah, I'll do that for you as well. All right, okay, all right, Michael, I'll uh, get the YouTube page at the end of the webinar as well. All right, okay, and uh, right, so if the Federal Reserve is hiking interest rates and if the state, remember, there's three components of uh, FOMC meeting. You have the Federal Reserve actually uh, raising interest rates, holding interest rates, or cutting interest rates. Then you have the FOMC statement, and then you have the FOMC press conference. So there are three elements to the FOMC interest rate decision. So if you have an interest rate decision where the uh, Fed has actually increased rates, but the statement and the press conference actually turn out to be less hawkish than expected, you could actually see the initial gain in the dollar index reverse. So what could be a case of a strong push in the dollar value of the US dollar at the start could actually reverse because you have a statement and a press conference that is actually less hawkish than was expected, right? So you cannot just look at an FOMC meeting at just one particular aspect. There's three elements to it and you have to incorporate all the three elements to actually determine the true outcome or the true direction of that uh, particular uh, event. All right, okay, so moving on to where can we get the data? All right, so this is uh, data from 3rd October to 12th October of this year. I've highlighted this range because you get a com good combination of labor market data such as JOLTS job openings, ADP non-farm, unemployment claims, uh, unemployment rate and non-farm payroll. Yeah, so these are the NFPs here. Then you also get PPI and CPI data as well. So as you can see, Forex Factory, uh, by using Forex Factory, we are, e easy, we are able to easily interpret the data. Right, so when, okay, so this column here, the rightmost column here is the previous month's uh, data or the previous week's data. Uh, most of the data comes in on a monthly basis, but you do get one or two data that comes in on a weekly basis. But let's just say everything here is on a monthly basis. So this is the previous month's data. Middle column gives you the estimate for the current uh, data or for the latest data. And the leftmost column gives you the actual data result itself. Right. So in this case, the previous month's reading was 8.92 million. So job openings means the number of job vacancies in the US. So if this number is higher, this typically signals strong hiring demand in the US. So with the forecast was for 8.8 .8 million, the actual number came in at 9.6 million. So that means there's a lot more job openings. So companies are looking to hire strongly. So this will function as a bullish catalyst for the dollar index. So when you see this number in green, it means it has come in higher than the forecast. And that means this is bullish for the dollar index. Similarly, ADP, non-farm employment change, previous month's reading was 180,000. The estimate for 4th October was 154,000, but the actual data came in lower than the forecast. So when the number is lower than the forecast, when it comes to employment, it turns out to be red. And when it is in red, it means that this is going to function, typically going to function as a bearish catalyst for the US dollar. Right? So this is how we can use Forex Factory to easily interpret the data without going into too much uh, details. Right, So similarly, when you have non-farm payrolls on Friday, 6th of October, uh, the estimate was 171,000, but it, you, you could see the data was almost more than double, right? Uh, 336,000, and it's in green as well. So when you get this data, which is much stronger than the forecast, this is going to typically act as a bullish catalyst. Similarly, just what we saw last Friday, we had a forecast of, I think, about 178,000 uh, last Friday for NFPs, but an actual number came in about 154,000. That number would be in red. So that means this is going to function as a bearish catalyst for the dollar index, which is what we actually saw last Friday, right? And coming to CPI, so when you have CPI data here, so you have CPI on an annualized basis, year over year, or a monthly basis. So when data comes in stronger than the forecast, it comes in in green. So when it's in green here like this, this means that this is typically going to be bullish for the US dollar, right? So this is how we can interpret the data. Similarly, if these two data points actually came in lower than the forecast, let's just say CPI month over month came in at 0.2%, CPI year over year came in at 3.4%, these figures would be in red. And that means this is going to typically 
uh, function as a bearish catalyst for the US dollar, right? So this is how we can interpret the data quite easily. And I'll go on to Forex Factory now as well. So here I am on Forex Factory. The good thing about Forex Factory is, uh, okay, so just let me do, uh, get last week's data, right? Let's just look at last week. So you can see last week, unemployment uh, numbers here, non-farm payroll, unemployment rate, right? You saw the actual data coming in at 150,000, which is lower than the forecast of 178,000. We also saw unemployment rate increase from 3.8 to 3.9%. So both these data points were in red. So that means this is going to typically function as a bearish catalyst for the dollar index, which is what happened. And similarly, you can click on the folder icon here and you can click on latest release. It takes you to that respective website as well. So the agency that covers non-farm payrolls is the Bureau of Labor Statistics. So it takes you to that website itself. You get a wall of text. We don't have time to read a wall of text, right? So all this stuff can be summarized quite easily. You can also see the PDF version of the news uh, release and you can also see the charts as well. So if you click on the PDF version of the news release, you get the press release for that month. So you can quickly see uh, that right total non-farm increased by only 150,000. Unemployment rate uh, increased a little bit as well to 3.9%. And you can see where the most job gains occurred. So if you want to read more details about that particular uh, data point, you can do so very easily on Forex Factory by clicking on the folder icon and then clicking on clicking on latest release, right? And then similarly for the charts, you're able to see how the unemployment rate has uh, been trending or performing over the last uh, 20 years. You can also see how the non-farm payroll actually has been rising as well. So you just need to look at total non-farm here. So employment by industry, click total non-farm and you can see how non-farm uh, after crashing during uh, the COVID lockdowns, we can see how the job market has bounced back relatively strongly. Most of the time the news is against the dollar, yet the dollar rises strongly. Uh, it depends. Uh, actually, if you see the bearish news, the catalyst, is it has actually functioned as a bear. Okay, you would do, you would see uh, the pullbacks occur, but because the Federal Reserve over the past few weeks has been quite hawkish as well, uh, because any pullbacks then uh, get uh, bounced up again. But what we've seen uh, in the last, in the most recent FOMC meeting, which was last week, last Thursday, when you look at the statement, read the statement, and you look at the press conference, you can clearly see there's a shift in uh, the outlook from Chairman Powell and his fellow FOMC members. They have definitely become less hawkish. They are employing a more neutral outlook, which is why when you look at the dollar index now, you can see that trend has completely changed, right? So if you look at price action since middle of July, of course, along the way, there were a bearish catalysts from a fundamental data point of news, but these uh, actually were just pullbacks along the way because the Fed during this period was still very uh, hawkish, Right, it's all about the outlook from the Federal Reserve as well, along with uh, the combination of the fundamental data. But now we're clearly seeing the shift. Last week on Thursday, we had FOMC meeting, which turned out to be uh somewhat neutral, right? Or some would even argue it was dovish. So that is why we saw Thursday markets, the dollar index fall strongly as well. Similarly, on Friday, you had a very uh weak labor, okay, I wouldn't say very weak, but you had a weaker than expected labor market report where unemployment rate went higher, NFPs had quite a big miss. And that is why you saw the sell-off in the dollar accelerate as well. Uh, this time you can see that the trend has clearly been broken, right? This trend line was clearly broken here uh, in mid-October, then price consolidated for a while. And then you can see the first support that was identified last week here. I'm on a daily time frame. This was the first support that we identified last week was clearly broken last Friday as well. So you can see this big fundamental shift in uh, market sentiment on the dollar index as well. So now the bias for the dollar index is to the downside and any uh, bearish data will continue to drive it lower. But of course, there's always just like on the way up, there are pullbacks along the way, just like on the way down, there are going to be retracements higher as well. All right, so do take note of that. Right, okay, so going back, 
to the slides. Okay, this is how we can use Forex Factory to interpret the data and also to get access to more details if you wish to find out more about that particular economic data point, right? So this is where Forex Factory, and the good thing about Forex Factory is you can filter across a various uh, periods of time. You look at it on a single day, you can even go back to last year as well and filter those dates and try and see data as well. So if you want to look at what happened 12th to 13th of October, you can do so. You can also go back to GDP, right? Like I said, click on the folder icon, click on latest release. It takes you to that uh, government website that's going to have the official data as well. So that's the good thing about Forex Factory. And because it's color-coded, you can also see the folders are in red, orange, and yellow. Red, of course, being the most or having the highest impact. Orange having the second most highest impact and uh, yellow, which is low. So orange is medium, red is high. And you can also see because of the color scheme here. So when you can see this GDP number, right? On 12th of October last year, came in at a negative 0.3%, which was lower than uh, the forecast of 0%. So that means this would have typically acted as a bearish catalyst for the pound. So that means the currency pair pound dollar would have likely to have fallen following this news release, right? So that's a good thing about Forex Factory where we can easily interpret the data without going into too much of the details of the actual fundamental data point. Right, okay. So now we're going to look at some examples of swing trading. So as I said, uh, I'll be using the dollar index uh, because of course, once you know how the dollar index is trading, you it nat naturally translates into all the other currency pairs and, and also you can use it to identify trends for gold as well. All right, so in this example, I'm using the daily time frame. So over here, the indicators that I'm using are stochastic. Uh, the stochastic oscillator, I'm using the Ichiboku cloud. And as you can see, I've identified several chart patterns as well, right? So for the Ichiboku cloud, I'm just using the standard parameters. I'm not, I've not changed any of the parameters. It's just the default parameters for Ichiboku cloud. And for stochastics, I'm using the parameters of 23 and 3, right? So these are the parameters that I'm using for... Uh, stochastics right so just to, for those who may not be familiar all right so for stochastics simply when uh price or when the oscillator drops uh below 20 usually uh indicates an oversold position but i don't use 20 the level 20 i like to see it actually drop as low as possible so now this could be the uh what we're looking for is the relative low so it could be it could be five it could be seven it could be ten so once you know the oscillator drops towards the uh, a level such as that, then you know price is uh, typically oversold. Similarly, when the oscillator rises above 80, it usually signals uh, uh, over, overbought position, but I don't use the level 80. I would actually like to find the actual relative high. So as you can see, the, the high here is probably about 90, about there. So that's when you know that it's potentially we are in an overbought position. Similarly, for Ichimoku Cloud, for those who may not be familiar, when the cloud is green, as you can see here from March of 2022 all the way till November of 2022, where the cloud is green, this indicates that this is a very strong bullish trend for the dollar index. And usually any pullbacks in price is usually going to be supported by the cloud. So you can see that here taking place in June of 2022. Then again here on July of 2022, price finding support above the cloud. And here in September as well, uh, and August, early September, price finding support right at the cloud itself before bouncing higher. So this is how you can use the Ichimoku cloud to identify strong trends and where the cloud can also off offer support or provide strong potential support for the bullish uptrend. Similarly, when price crosses uh, under the bullish Ichimoku cloud, that usually signals a reversal in the trend and the cloud eventually turns bearish as well. So now the cloud is red, which indicates a strong bearish uh, trend. And usually when the cloud is bearish and price rises into the cloud, typically the cloud can act as a strong uh, resistance zone as well. Not always, but it can always uh, act as a strong resistance zone because you can see here clearly price clearly pushed into the cloud, but it broke above the bearish Ichimoku cloud before reversing to drop lower, right? And also you can see when uh, 
when I do swing trading, I, I use it on the daily time frames. So I'm going to give you the examples that I do that have worked well. So you can see here when price is consulted, and this is when you also have to take into account the fundamental uh, aspect of it as well. So this is when the Federal Reserve, after March onwards, they started to raise interest rates aggressively, right? So that would signal a strong uh, bullish move for the US dollar. So hence the dollar index is going to rise strongly. So you can see here, price was actually consolidating within this range. So this was, you are able, this is another range bound trading as well. You can see price was ranging between these two levels. And then once the rate hikes uh, kicked off, you could see price clearly break above this uh, horizontal level here, this overlap or this pullback resistance level here, which indicates, which indicated a bullish breakout. And this is where you were able to uh, initiate a long swing trade as well. Then similarly, as price corrected in June, Right, you can see price of trading within the uh, falling wedge, right? Price trading within the falling wedge. Uh, it's approaching the cloud, as I mentioned, the bullish Ichimoku cloud usually provides strong uh, a strong support zone. So as price comes close to the Ichimoku cloud, and we can also see the stochastic oscillator reaching an oversold position. This is actually signaling to us a potential mm. bullish reversal for the dollar index. So and what we're waiting for is the confirmation, right? So you can see the upper trend line of the of the wedge here. And as price broke out of this wedge, we had three indicators to tell us this is a potential bullish breakout, right? We have the oscillator, stochastic oscillator indicating severe oversold uh, position. We also see price finding support just above the bullish Ichimoku cloud. And we see price breaking out of this uh falling wedge so that signals the next move up long swing trade similarly here similarly here you can see price uh, forming a triangle uh, in this case this is a uh descending triangle here falling triangle but in this case price actually broke up to the upside right remember the other example we saw price break lower so in this scenario of this uh ascending triangle descending triangle here price found support slightly above uh the ichimoku cloud and with price uh breaking above this descending trend line and also with stochastic turning higher here so in this uh gives us a signal especially with the breakout of this descending trend line here, especially with this breakout here and price finding support about the Ichimoku cloud. This gives us quite a strong confidence level that this is a bullish breakout to the upside again. Similarly, in uh, August, July, August, as price was pulling back in this uh, falling wedge, once again, uh, stochastics begins to show very oversold position. We also see price finding strong support right at the edge of the bullish cloud and as price breaks above the upper trend line of the falling wedge, we get the next move up. So this is another long bullish breakout as well. Similarly here on the downtrend, when uh, price broke underneath the bearish Ichimoku cloud to signal a potential reversal, price actually started to trade lower. You can see here within this uh, falling wedge, there are also rising wedges as well. Right? You can see there's one rising wedge here, another one here. Another one here. Now on the downside, it was a little bit more difficult because you didn't have the stochastics to help you identify uh, the overbought positions. But if you had looked at uh, the chart patterns on the daily time frame, you'll be able to see this was a rising wedge here, another rising wedge, another rising wedge. So the breakout of this wedge would help uh, initiate a bearish breakout. So you have swing. You could see here to the downside, the moves were definitely not as big as the moves to the upside, right? So the moves to the upside were definitely much long, uh, much bigger in terms of absolute returns and percentage returns. But for the downside, you could see the moves, although dollar index went from about 107.40 to as low as 100, right? It, it lost over 700 pips. You can see that. But for the breakouts, uh, they were not uh, as deep each time. There was actually relatively strong retracements uh, along the way, right? And then similarly, once uh, price started uh, making lower lows and higher lows, you could also see a falling wedge being formed. And then when stochastic strongly rises up like this, and you also see price uh, breaking above the upper trend line and finding support, this also would signal a potential 
bullish breakout as well. Right, and then this is now for 2023. Right, so, uh, okay, another thing I would like to mention here, because in October, November, this was the period where the Bank of Japan intervened in the open market, right, in the open currency market. So this means this is an FX, this was a foreign exchange intervention, right? As I mentioned earlier, interventions are very important. This was uh, reported uh, widely by all media, right? You don't need any special sub subscription services to tell you that uh, BOJ intervention had taken place. This was covered by all uh, of the major financial news outlets and even your local news outlets as well. So when you have an intervention uh, by the Bank of Japan, they're actually selling the US dollar. Um, do take note before that, the Bank of Japan uh, is one of the uh, central banks that has the highest holdings of U uh, foreign reserves. So their foreign reserve consists mostly of the US dollar and US treasuries. So they are one of the largest holders of foreign reserves. So when they want to intervene in the open market, they will be selling the US dollar that they hold. They'll be selling the treasuries that they hold. And they'll be using the sales proceeds to buy back the Japanese yen in the open currency market. So when they're buying back the Japanese yen, they're actually increasing the value of the uh, Japanese yen. Uh, and because they're also selling the US dollar aggressively, this is why you saw the US dollar actually reverse course in the last quarter of 2022, even though during this period, the Federal Reserve was still raising interest rates. So this is a very important uh, uh, aspect to take note of because the intervention measures by a strong central bank such as Bank of Japan can be very impactful. So during this period in the last quarter of 2022, the Federal Reserve was still raising interest rates, but the dollar wasn't actually climbing higher, right? The dollar wasn't actually climbing higher. And part of that, was due to the intervention by the Bank of Japan. And this intervention was uh, suspected to have concluded towards the end of January and Feb, right? There was no official announcement to say that the uh, intervention measures uh, had uh, stopped, but that's when uh, it did. And you could see market forces come back into play because during this period, 2023, the Federal Reserve was still more hawkish than the rest of the other central banks. So that's when demand for the dollar started to pick up again. So it's important to note this sort of uh, uh, policy actions by major central banks because they can really have an impact on the currency markets as what we've seen here. Okay, so similarly here, we're using, in this example, using the combination of falling wedges, oversold stochastics, and breakouts of the falling wedges as well. Right here also you see a descending trend line you also see stochastics highlighting oversold positions here. You see price breaking out of the falling wedge, price breaking out of the uh, descending trend line to go higher, right? Okay, now the next example I'll be showing you would be for the S&P 500, right? So, so for those who trade indices uh, as well, this is a good uh, strategy to use. So once again, this is on the daily time frame, and I'm using... Uh, the SP500. So this is an instrument that tracks S&P 500 futures. For this example, uh, or this strategy, I'm using Bollinger Bands. So no changes to the uh, parameter settings for the Bollinger Bands. I'm just using the default settings for Bollinger Bands. Stochastic is once again, I'm using 23.3, right? For this uh, moving average and for the smoothing parameters, I'm just using 23.3. And so in this example, we're using it. We're using the Bollinger Bands, we're using Stochastics, and I'm also using the Volatility Index. So this is the VIX. For those who may be familiar with it, uh, the VIX is a measure of the implied volatility in uh, in the equity markets based on options, right? Based on options pricing. So without going into too much detail, so what is important to note that if uh, when the VIX is rising very strongly and it reaches past a particular threshold or particular level, it, it, it would be that equity markets are selling off strongly. And as the VIX peaks and starts to recede and fall back uh, to drop lower, that usually signals a potential uh, short-term bottom for the index. So in this case, because the VIX is measuring the options pricing or the implied volatility of the S&P 500, naturally we would use it with the S&P 500. So what I'm trying to highlight here is we are able to see when the VIX crosses the threshold of 30, right? When it crosses the threshold of 30, it usually means that uh, we are approaching a potential market bottom, right? So we're going to use the combination of the VIX going past 30, 
looking at price pushing uh, against the lower bound of the Bollinger Band. And we're also using Stochastic to identify a major potential oversold position. So once all these three line up here, the probability of a short-term bounce is quite high. So as you can see, as the VIX retreats down here, Stochastic starts to move up and price starts to move away from the lower bound of the Bollinger Band. Price, uh, usually you can see this is a short-term bounce. In this scenario here, in February of 2022, this bounce wasn't as significant as the other bounces highlighted by the vertical line. So back here in early March, similarly, you can see VIX being elevated for about a week or two. And as VIX starts to retreat lower, we can also see stochastics uh, moving up higher. That's when you can also see price moving up here. So this is another way to, uh, to identify another swing, uh, swing low here. To, uh, to identify a potential bullish uh, swing position, uh, swing opportunity here. Now, this strategy works better for uh, identifying the potential bottom rather than the absolute top. So, and also it's not foolproof every time as well. It gives you a better opportunity to identify it. But as you can see here, as in B, we did see VIX being elevated but actually price continued to go lower as well. It was only in June or end of May onwards when the reversal actually came. So do take note that um, it is not a guaranteed uh, strategy to identify potential market bottoms, but it does work uh, pretty well. So similarly here in June or towards the end of May, early June, you can see stochastics start to rise up. You can also see price bouncing off the lower bound of the Bollinger Band to move higher, and VIX is also retreating. So it gives you another opportunity to go, uh, to go long on the S and P five hundred. Then similarly here in the middle of June, once again you can see VIX crossing over thirty, uh, stochastic showing oversold position. Bollinger Band pushing against the lower bound and price pushing against the lower bound of the Bollinger Band before bouncing off this. So again, identifying another short-term bounce for the S&P 500. So you can see that again in October, or oh sorry, rather in end August, oh sorry, end September, early October as well, right? Price pretty much formed a double bottom here. VIX also formed a double top. And as VIX retreated, stochastic started to rise. We were able to... Uh, identify another uh, bullish uh, bounce for the S&P 500. Right, and then coming into 2023, uh, so you can see here at the end of December as well, there was another, although in this scenario, VIX did not go above 30. You can see the threshold here is 30. VIX did not cross 30 here. But uh, in this case, we did st still see price make a new uh or price form a bottom here and make and after that bounce higher. So in this case, we use stochastics and we can see price bouncing off the support level, not breaking below the low Bollinger Band to climb higher. But what we saw in March, right, with stochastics uh, indicating oversold position, VIX touching 30. Yes, in this case, it didn't rise above 30, but it did touch 30. But you have all the other indicators to help us identify a potential uh, bullish opportunity for the S&P 500. Then similarly, in um, in May and uh, August, uh, although yeah, you can see VIX didn't climb up, come up as close to anywhere to 30, but looking at how stochastic um, reversed and how price bounced off the lower Bollinger Band, you can see here price made a double bottom as well before bouncing higher. You can see price uh, stochastics also indicating oversold before going higher. Similarly here, you can see price sort of forming another double bottom before bouncing a little bit higher as well. Right, So this is a strategy that I like to use for the S&P 500 to identify potential swing longs uh, on the daily time frame. Now, of course, you can use this on a daily time frame to identify the swing longs. And of course, you can zoom in onto the lower time frames as well. You could probably go down into the four hour time frame or one hour time frame to identify or fine tune your um, entry entry uh, positions as well. All right. Okay. Um, right. So we've come towards the end of today's webinar. If there's anything you would like me to cover or repeat or go through as well, I'll be more than happy to go through it with you. Right. Uh, 
with the all right thank hi jamila all right thank you for the kind words all right thank you um all right so just before we end um uh, are there any questions or would you like me to clarify any point with regards to uh the strategy or to how to interpret the fundamental data summary on swing trade okay um right right okay so we can do a quick summary as well all right sure okay so all right so so as we know swing trading is we use uh, it's a strategy uh that is used to uh capture medium term uh movements right, and medium term holding period so you're looking for significant swing lows and significant swing highs to capture the long swing trade and the short swing trade uh and of course generally it takes up less time because you're not actively trading on a daily basis and also but also do take note of some of the cons that uh that you will you could have with uh holding positions uh overnight as well as holding positions over the weekend as well Okay, the vertical lines on the S&P 500, those are lines that I've identified as uh, potential market bottoms, right? Potential market, but by using the combination of uh, the oversold stochastic, using the VIX going as high as 30 and with price uh, pushing on uh, the lower bound of the Bollinger Band. Right, okay, uh, what time frame? Okay, this is based on your personal strategy because I'm more of a swing trader, so I would use the four hour time frame and daily time frame. But if you are an uh, intraday trader, then you can obviously use the one minute, five minute, 15 minute time frame. What's more important is to be able to identify chart patterns and to use the technical indicators such as uh, stochastics or Ichimoku cloud or moving averages and to understand them properly and then implement it for the strategy that you're more comfortable with. And there's no point trying to uh, uh, implement a swing trading strategy if it doesn't suit your style. If you're more of an intraday, intraday trader, then definitely look for the intraday strategies and uh, uh, the relevant indicators that would help you uh, get better at that type of trading. All right, okay. And then, uh, okay, typical indicators are moving averages, Bollinger Bands, Stochastics, Relative Strength Index. As you can see, I've used the combination of Bollinger Bands, Stochastic Oscillator. I didn't use the RSI. Of course, you can also implement the RSI in your analysis as well. Just because I've not used it doesn't mean uh, you can't do it either. The strategies uh, that I use here or, or the analysis that I do involves mostly moving averages, Bollinger Bands and Stochastics and the Ichimoku Cloud as well. Right. It's also important to recognize chart pattern, especially the falling wedges. Right, Falling wedges and rising wedges really help us to identify potential bearish and bullish breakouts. Right, So quick summary, right? So uptrend, uh, a rising wedge and an uptrend typically signals a bearish breakout. A uh, falling wedge in a falling market typically signals a bullish breakout. Pendants, you can have pendants uh, or symmetrical tri triangles breaking out to the upside or downside. It's either way. You also have rising triangles, falling triangles, head and shoulders, inverse head and shoulders. And of course, we looked at Forex Factory and how to uh, easily interpret the data as well without having to go into the details of each particular uh, economic data point and how we can also access uh, the actual website or the relevant government agency by clicking on the folder icon should we wish to find out more info about that particular data point. All right, thank you everyone for the kind words. And okay, I think I did say about YouTube, right? I think some people wanted to see where we can get, uh, which is the website for Tickmill. All right, so just let me get that for you guys as well. YouTube. Right, okay, so if you go here, pick meal global videos, right? I'll put this in the chat box as well. Oops, I got right. So this is the link. So if you go here, you click on videos, you can click on live as well. As you could see past 
uh, webinars being uploaded as well. So you can see non-farm payrolls was updated two days ago, risk management two days ago, fundamental analysis as well two days ago, and so on and so forth, right? So you can look at it here as well, right? So all the past webinars are recorded, uh, sorry, up, are recorded and uploaded onto uh, the Tickmill, Tickmill's YouTube page. And of course, uh, you can re-watch any of these videos at your own uh, leisure as well. All right, okay. Uh, what can you say about dollar index moving in opposite to its currency plan? Okay, so basically just to summarize, right, so if, okay, so just to summarize, if the, do, oops, there we go in a minute. So if the dollar index DXY, right, is rising, right, so that means currency pairs, uh, such as the euro, the pound, right, uh, the Aussie, and the Kiwi, all would be falling, right? And it means that currency pairs such as dollar yen, dollar cad, and dollar franc, be rising, right? This is how we can interpret it as well. So similarly, if dollar index is falling, that means currency pairs such as the Euro, the Pound, the Aussie, and Kiwi will be rising. And currency pairs such as dollar Yen, dollar CAD, dollar Franc will be falling. All right. Thanks everyone for tuning in today. Hope this has been a great session uh, for all of you. Do take note, we do have a central bank uh, interest rate announcement coming up tomorrow, which is by the RBA, the Reserve Bank of Australia. They are expected to raise their cash rate. So this could this could potentially function as a bullish catalyst for the Aussie dollar tomorrow. Right? So that's at 3.30 a.m. GMT time. So do take a note. Do look out for that event and uh, do take note how it could potentially impact any of your positions should you be trading around that time. All right. Take care, everyone. Thank you and have a great trading week. All right. Uh, sorry. I'm just going to launch a, a poll as well. Uh, we will be uh, truly appreciated if you can give me give your feedback as well because uh, we're always working to improve our webinars be it a, a educational session or a live trading session right we're always looking for uh, responses back from you guys so that we can always try to push out new content or improve our current content as well all right so thanks everyone for tuning in today have a great trading week and do look out for the rba uh, cash rate announcement tomorrow 3.30 a.m. GMT time, if I'm not mistaken, right? It's potentially going to be a bullish uh, catalyst for the Aussie dollar tomorrow. All right, take care, everyone. Thank you.